let's commit the rest of the meeting unto the Lord and ask for his blessing upon it. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can come in, Lord, to this tabernacle, Lord, this morning. And we have the freedom to do so, Lord, and to worship, Lord, your lovely name. And we come now, Lord, and we, we want to hear from you, Lord. We want to hear what you have to say to your people, Lord, through your word. And Lord, we lift you high, Lord, and we glory in your name. We thank you, Lord, for the precious blood of the Lamb that saved our wretched souls, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you'll move and you'll brood among your people. Pray, Lord, that you'll have your way, Lord. Move, Lord, upon hearts and souls, Lord, and minds and bodies, Lord. Lord, let your name be glorified and exalted, Lord. We ask it, Lord, in your lovely name. Amen. Amen. Justified by the justifier. And it's a word that came to me a few weeks ago, and I just, I was actually at work, and I got a break, and somebody had said something to me in the course of a conversation. And in the course of the conversation, the person said to me, Glenn, the scars run deep. And the conversation stopped. I stopped the conversation because th these words were in my head. The scars run deep. And I got a break and I took my phone out and I, and I wrote down, justified by the justifier. Because that's what came into my head. And the scars run deep in life for people. Some scars are deeper than others. And we can get tired physically and we can get tired mentally in the service of God but never tired of serving God. Amen. Never tired of serving the Master. We can feel unworthy. We can feel done. And we can get disappointments in life. Pain can come. Physical pain. Mental pain. <coughs> sorrows in life and the scars can run deep. Some scars can run deeper than others. We can feel not good enough even to serve God and maybe fall on ourselves in some way in our walk with the Lord and we can't seem to get up. You can't seem to get up and the scars run deep, both physical and mental and you're struggling to cope and maybe the scars run deep. And maybe that's you this morning in this tabernacle. And some scars are deeper than others. And you're deflated. You feel done. You feel exhausted. You've entered this tabernacle. You've smiled and you shook the hand of the man at the door. You've sat in your seat and you've smiled. But the scars run deep. And you're weary. And you're tired physically and mentally and you feel as if you're done you feel as if you're on the scrap heap and that's you sitting in your seat in this tabernacle this morning and so it's good to go back to the cross when that person said to me Glenn the scars run deep I thought to myself the antidote for the scars that run deep is for you to go back to the cross. Go back to the cross of Christ. It's good to go back to the day that you were justified by the justifier. It's good to ponder what you were before Jesus called your name and ponder who you are in Christ now and what he has done for you in your life and what it means. It's good to look back on the day that you were declared justified by the justifier. That's the remedy. That's the antidote for the scars running deep. When he said the scars run deep, I thought to myself, you better go back to the cross well where you were justified by the justifier because that's where you draw your strength. Besides all of this emotion, of the human mind and frame and its emotion and its feelings of the body and the mind and the human frame 
You need to go to God. You need to go to God's word. And what does God say about the blood bought? And what does God's word say about you? You need to go back to the word and you need to go back to the book and you need to go to the cross of Christ. Justified. It's a strong word. It's a big word. But what does it actually mean biblically? What does it mean biblically to be justified? What does God say to the blood bought? What does God say to the elect of God who are justified? It means made accepted in Christ and deemed righteous because he imputes his righteousness onto you. You're accepted by Christ as thrice holy God and you are deemed righteous and you are counted worthy by a holy God. Justification is being made right and deemed righteous because sins have been forgiven and sins have been blotted out. So when the scars run deep, brother, when the scars run deep, sister, and you're feeling done and deflated, you need to lift the book and you need to find out what God says about you. You are justified in Christ. You are justified in the beloved. You are accepted, made righteous and worthy and you're justified in the sight of a thrice holy God. You're not done. You're not out. You're not beat. You're justified by the justifier. That's what God says about the blood bought. And he will never lose anyone that he has redeemed. Any the Father has given him, he will never lose them. Justified by the blood of the Lamb. But let's go to Romans chapter 3. I went to Romans chapter 3 and I started to look at these verses of Scripture again as I thought about being justified by the justifier. And we'll read through some of them. Romans chapter 3 and starting to read at verse 19. Paul the Apostle writing to the Romans and listen to the first few, few words of the first 19 in chapter 3. And it says this, now we know, we know, he says, that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. And what does that verse mean? It means the law stops all boasting. Stops all boasting of any man, woman or child that ever walked this planet. The law tells you that you have fallen short, that you're a sinner before a holy God. And it's like a mirror. When you stand in the mirror and you look in the mirror in the morning, and I stand in front of the mirror and I can see all my faults. I can see all my physical faults. You're getting old, you see. You're decaying. And the law is like a mirror. And here's the law. And the law tells you that you've fallen short. The Lord tells you that you're a hell. The law tells you you're a hell-deserving sinner. Here is the law. Here is the murder. And you have fallen short. And you are a sinner. And you are condemned before a holy God. That's what the law does. But on to verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, listen very carefully. You can forget about your works. You can bend them. Because God's word says this. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. No flesh. In the sight, in his sight, for the law is the knowledge of sin. Here's the murder. Here's the law. And it reflects on to you and it tells you you're fallen short. You're a sinner before a holy God. In verse 21, but now. Listen to the language, but now. The righteousness of God without the law is manifested. Being witnessed by the law, 
and the prophets. But now the righteousness of God, not just speaking of who God is, but it's speaking of the righteousness that he imputes to us and declares us righteous, manifest in the flesh, sent of the Father, and he is righteous. He's not a big man in the sky. He's righteous. He's thrice holy. And here he is manifest in the flesh. And because he is righteous, he imputed his righteousness onto you. You see, you're justified by the justifier. You're not on the scrap heap. You're not done. You're justified by the King of Kings and by the Lord of Lords who was manifest and walked this earth. He was manifest in the flesh, sent of the Father. Here is grace and here is mercy. And you are blood-bought and you are justified by the justifier. What a Savior and what a Lord. In verse 22, for all have sinned. And we look at that and we read that all the time and we skiff over that. But you would think about the way some people live their lives that they've no sin. Their scripture says clearly and the law says clearly there is none righteous, no not one. For all have sinned and fallen short. Kings, presidents, queens, governments, it covers everybody. Everybody has sinned and all have sinned and all have fallen short, come short of the glory of God. We have all fallen short of a thrice holy God. But listen to verse 24. Verse 24 of the chapter 3. Being justified freely. I, I look at that verse and I, I was reading this all week and it's the gospel of Christ and do you want to know something? It sends my head into orbit because I still, I still can't, I understand what the scriptures are saying and I understand that I'm justified by, by the justifier and I understand what I'm reading but I can't take it in. I, I can't take it in. I still can't take it in. I can't take in what this book says. I, I, I can't fathom it. And I say, Lord, how can this be? How can it be that I am justified by the justifier? How can it be that he was sent, manifest in the flesh? The Father sent the Son. And you look for wonders. People are looking for wonders in the church all the time. I'll give you a wonder that will never be matched. It's the wonder of God's Son hanging on Calvary's cross and shedding His blood that you might be justified. You want a sign, you go to the cross. There'll never be a bigger sign than the cross. Outstretched arms, the crimson tide which says, I am justified by the justifier and I am redeemed and I am blood bought. You see, I'm not done and I'm not out and I'm not finished and the scars do run deep but he says you're justified and you're mine and you're in the palm of my hand. Have you walked into this tabernacle this morning defeated? You see, the smile hides everything. The smile hides it all. And if you walked in defeated, well, this is for you. This is for you. This is what the Lord has to say to his people this morning. The Lord's ministering on to his people and speaking to his people. Being justified, in verse 24, declared righteous by God. Anybody points the finger at you and tries to bring up your past, nail it on the spot. Nail it on the spot. 
you can put your finger away because I'm justified by the justifier. He imputed his righteousness onto me and I am blood bought and you can never be lost. Never be lost. Anybody points the finger, nail them on the spot and don't take it. Nail them on the spot and give them the scriptures and put them right. It also says grace. And I looked at that and I thought, I, 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 that my head was going when I was reading these verses. Listen to what the grace means. The favor to the undeserving. How can you have favor of a holy God? How? How can you have favor and grace to the undeserving before a holy God? I, I, can't, I can't take it in. And I can't fathom it. But I can praise him and I can worship him for it. Redemption as well, it says. Buying back or paying a ransom to release from bondage. There it is again. You're not in bondage. Don't live as if you're in bondage because you're not. It's not of the Lord. You're not in bondage. He freed you from your bonds. Your chains fell off. You're not in bondage. From glory on to glory. From victory on to victory. With our justifier. That's how you live your life. But Glenn, life's tough. It is tough. It's tough for everybody, by the way. Including this man standing up here. It's tough for everybody. And my scars run deep too. But I go back to the cross. Back to the cross. Satan and the enemy would have you six foot under. Let's nail it. Drink, drugs, suicide. And the lies from governments, day, day and daily. You switch your TV off and lift the book. And live in power and live in authority. You're not under bondage. You're justified by the justifier. That's what this book says. And you have favor from a holy God. In verse 25 of chapter 3, in Romans it says, Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance or the patience of God. And propitiation means an atoning sacrifice. He was your atoning sacrifice and the removal of God's wrath upon your life. Have God's people a right to shout and sing? I think so. When I read Romans chapter 3, no wrath, justified, washed in the blood of the Lamb, grace and favour from a holy God who called your name and sought you out because you were lost and you wanted nothing to do with him. And here's the law. And the law says, you're guilty. You're guilty. But Christ says, you're justified. You're justified by the blood. What a saviour and what a Lord and what scripture before us. An atoning sacrifice or propitiation. It also speaks of remission of sins that are past. You see, justice had to be done. Justice had to be done for sin. It had to be paid for. It had to be paid for. The justifier paid the debt that I could not pay. And you're justified. The sin had to be paid for. Who's going to pay it? There was only one who could pay it. Christ manifest in the flesh. Sent of the Father. And he says, son, you're going to have to go. You're going to have to pay the penalty. That these people in Christ encounters tabernacle. Can be justified by your blood. And that's the gospel. Not of works. Not of works. Let's go to Isaiah 45.
Isaiah 45, and listen, listen, to, the, listen to the words. This is a prophetic word. And this is like a foreshadow of Christ. And God speaks to Cyrus, the king in Babylon at the time. And he releases the southern kingdom back to Jerusalem to build the temple. And, and there's a prophetic word in it. And listen to the prophetic word. It says, Isaiah 45 and verse 20. And listen to the words. Listen to the power of these words. Assemble yourselves and come, draw near together. Ye that are escaped of the nations, that have no knowledge, that set up the wood of their graven images and pray unto a God that cannot save. That's the United Kingdom. That's the UK today. And it says, gather yourselves, assemble yourselves and come and draw near that have no knowledge. That's why the UK is perishing. Because they've no knowledge of this book and they've no knowledge of God. They've no knowledge of the covenant people that they are. But they're not lost to God. He knows where they are. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together who has declared this from ancient time. Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. There's no other God. There's none beside him. There's no name that comes close. And that is the answer to the United Kingdom. Turn back to God. Teach the word of God in the schools and the universities. If your pastor doesn't preach the gospel, get rid of him and employ somebody who does. And the governments and the MPs and the MLAs who say they're saved, my challenge to you today is to get into government and lift that book and read it. Don't come forward in your own knowledge. I'm not standing here this morning in my own brain knowledge. No, because I've got nothing to say. The only thing I have to say is from this book. And if I've got nothing to say from that book, I'll go and sit down. I will go and sit down. I have nothing to say. It's from God. From God to me and from me to you. But it's God who's speaking. I'm just the messenger, that's all I am. The paper boy. That's what it is. I'm just the servant. Let's get it right. Look on to me, he says, and be ye saved, the United Kingdom, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself. Do you know why he says he's sworn by himself? Because there's no higher power. He says, I have to swear by myself because I'm looking around and I don't see anybody else to swear by. That's why he says that. He says, I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. What does that mean? It means that anything that God has spoken has happened, is happening now, or will happen in the future. You see, the gospel is like a juggernaut and you can't stop it. And the prophetic words of Christ in his book is like a gospel juggernaut and all the prophecies and you can wave your fist and you can say all you like. It doesn't matter. It's going to happen because he said it and it won't return on to him void. God's word will be fulfilled in the fullness of time. Surely shall one say in the Lord, have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. The enemies will be ashamed. Sooner or later. 
In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. See, his word won't return unto him void. Anything that Christ has said, it will happen. And that includes you being justified by the justifier. He's coming back for you, you see. And he, the Father has given me, he says. He's coming back for them. The meanings of justified in the Aramaic, Zadik, to be just, be righteous, be in the right, be justified and have a just cause. In the Greek, dikeo, to render or show or regard as just or innocent, free, declared righteous. In the Hebrew, hitsti, to declare judicially in a court of law. To declare judicially in a court of law that one state is in harmony with the demands of the law. But listen, only possible in the courts of Christ, the highest courts, there's no other court above it by the blood of the Lamb. Only possible in Christ's courts, justified, grace, favor, redeemed, blood-bought, ransomed by the blood of the Lamb in the courts of Christ. Justified at peace with God. How, how can that be? How, how can you have peace with God? Peace with God? I read these verses and I'm, I have to really think. Peace with God. Justified, defended by God, excused by God, exonerated by God, upheld by God, and vindicated by God. And I say, how? How can it be? I've been at it all week. I've read it over and over and over and over and over. Acts chapter 13. Acts 13, verse 39. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things. All things. Ah, uh, you're, you're no good. No. Christ says, I'm justified. He says it in his word. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things, everything, from which ye could not be justified by the law. There it is, by the law of Moses. All that believe are justified. God, as the righteous judge, declares sinners righteous if they trust in Christ on the sole basis of, and there's only one foundation of Christ's obedience unto death and not to any of our works. It puts works to flight. If you can go before Christ with your works, why did the Father manifest the Son in the flesh? And why did he shed his blood on Calvary's cross, buried and rose again the third day? seen of many and ascended the right hand of the Father. If you can go with your works, why the cross? You see, you can't because the law is a murder and the law says you're wretched. That's what you are. That's what you were before holy God. You're stinking, putrefying and you're wretched and you make me sick. That's what it was before you were justified. That's what you were. And you were damned. 
Everlasting separation from Christ. Those words, those words should send shivers down the spine of every Christ rejector on this planet. Spurgeon, I came across one of his sermons and it's from, you'll have to forgive me, it's from 1857, I went back a bit. But I came across it and I couldn't get away from it. And I listened to to what he was preaching. He was preaching on justification. And I just want you to try and grasp what he said. 1857. And I read it and I thought, he's, I would love to have met Spurgeon. I will meet him in heaven. But I want to see Jesus first. I want to see Jesus first. But Spurgeon, I would love to have a conversation with Spurgeon. 1857 and Spurgeon was preaching on justification and listen to what he says. Today, today, now, we are accepted in the beloved. Today, absolved from sin. Today, acquitted at the bar, the courts of God. Today, now, in your seat, you're justified and you're acquitted. And Christ says, not guilty. We are now, even now, and you can hear Spurgeon's words. You can hear him riling up in the spirit. And he, and he, he, he can nearly, he can't even understand or believe what he's saying, but he's saying it in faith. We are now, even now, pardoned. Even now our sins are put away. Even now we stand in sight of God accepted as though we had never been guilty in the first place. Even now, he says, even now, not guilty. Will you sit in your seat? I think that's a reason to praise the Lord. I think that's a reason to shout hallelujah. Even now in your seat, Will you sit justified by a holy God and washed in the blood of Allah? Spurgeon, listen to this. This is Spurgeon again. This is brilliant. Love what he preached. The hill of comfort is the hill of Calvary. The sufferings of Christ and the sufferings of Calvary and the hill of Calvary, although it was his sufferings, It was your comfort, your comfort. That was your hill. Listen to what he says about the cross. The house of consolation is built with the wood of the cross of Christ. Your comfort is the hill of Calvary and your consolation and your house of consolation was built with the wood of the cross. Our faith is in the rock whose side was pierced. No scene can gladden the soul like the scene of Calvary. Spurgeon speaking, he's preaching the word. Is it not strange that the darkest hour that there ever was on planet earth is your hill of comfort? Each drop of his blood able to alleviate the agonies and the woes of mankind. Listen to what he said at the end. The groans of Calvary have put the justified groans to flight. Spurgeon in 1857, preaching the gospel. And he nailed it. He nailed it. The hill of Calvary and the groans of Christ put your groans to flight.
Justification can be a forensic word. These are the courts of the world. This is the way the world works. A prisoner is brought to the bar at a court of law of justice and to be tried. There is only one way that prisoner can be justified. He or she must be found to be not guilty. If he or she is found not guilty, then they are justified. If found guilty, they cannot be justified. It's impossible. That's the courts of the world. But I'm glad that there's other courts, a higher court. This is God's courts. This is how God operates. But we are guilty, but we are justified. In God's courts, the verdict is guilty. You're guilty as charged. Here is the law. Here is the ordinances against your name. And the charge in God's court is you are guilty as charged. The evidence is clear. But then declared justified. Our substitute takes our place and stands in our stead. He ransoms, ransoms us by the blood of the Lamb and he declares us justified by the justifier in the courts of God by his precious blood. That's the courts of Christ. You see, you can't walk into the court in this land and you're standing in the dock and the judge is looking at you and he says, you're guilty. Guilty as charged. And you can't walk over and say, no, it's okay, I'll take his place. You'd be chased. You'd be told to get out. But in the courts of Christ, you're standing in the dock. Guilty as charged. And Christ goes, no. You go free and I'll take your place. And I'll declare you justified. That's how Christ works. What a saviour. What a God. Justified by the justifier. What a redeemer. You're in here this morning and you come in flat. Like somebody had let the air out of a tar. You're just, uh, I'm done. Yeah, God says you're not done. God says get back into the battle and get your armor on and fight and fight well. Time's short. Christ is coming back. When Christ comes back, I want to be standing on my feet fighting. I can't do that on my own. I can't. I have to dig in every day. Dig into the word. Listen to the word. Listen to his speaking in your ear. And when the scars run deep, brother, and when the scars run deep, sister, get into the word. Get into the word which declares you justified by the justifier and by the blood of the lamb. Get into the word. That's where you draw your strength. Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. No one can condemn who Christ has justified. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Ephesians 1 and 7. I am forgiven in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace and how rich is his grace. The favour of God. How rich is his grace. I am cleansed, 1 John chapter 1 and 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. All sin, all sin, 
all sin. You're no good. You're a wretch. You're done. You're finished. Put your finger away and close your mouth. Because God's word says, all sin. There's not one sin that wasn't covered by the blood of Christ. Not one. And you can't be lost. You're in the palm of his hand in the pavilion. And he says, you're my jewels. And I'm going to come back for you. You're my jewels. He sings over you. He draws you in like the mother hen and the chicks. And he sings over you and he says, you're my jewels. You're my precious. And you think the Lord's going to let you go? No. It can't happen. It can't happen. Power to overcome Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Galatians 3 and 13. Bought with a price. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. He hung on the tree. He became cursed. So you could go free. He became a curse. And the father pours out his wrath. And he says, Son, you'll have to take it. But these are justified. But it's only justified through the cross. Only through the cross, only through the hill of Calvary, and only through that crimson tide, and only through our lovely Savior manifest in the flesh, can you be justified by the justifier. The blood's the whole way through the book. You can't get away from the blood, and neither would you want to. I don't under, under, understand anybody who doesn't talk great about the blood. Talk much about the blood because it's the blood of the son that ransomed your soul. The ransom was the blood. It wasn't money. It wasn't works. It was the blood. Here's the ransom. What is it? This is the blood of Christ. That was the ransom. That's what it took to ransom your soul. Only for it. Eternal separation from Christ and no hope. No hope. Only for it. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. My redemption cannot perish. It can't be changed or altered. You do know that. You're Christ's. Okay, we might fall from time to time and we all do, everybody does. You see, if you see your brother or sister falling in Christ or they're getting weak or they've had a hard time, go and gather them up. We're a family of believers, the body, and he is the head. Go and gather them up and help them. We all fall. Everybody falls. That's why you had to be saved. That's why Christ had to come manifest in the flesh. That's why the blood had to be shed because you've fallen short. You've fallen short. You need it saved. Yeah. You need it saved. You need it, Christ. First Peter chapter 1, 18 and 19. For as much as ye know, ye know Christ encounters tabernacle. I know I am assured of it. I know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold used for all sorts of evil and wickedness. You weren't redeemed with them. I know. For your vain conversations and the traditions of men from your father's but you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ 
as a lamb without blemish and a lamb without spot. I know that I am redeemed. I know that it was by the blood of Christ and I know now, today, as Spurgeon said, that I am justified by the justifier. I know, I'm assured of it and I stand on it. And that's how I get through life. How do you get through life, Glenn? I'll tell you how I get through life. I talk to the Lord. I talk to the Lord. And I read his word. And I walk with him and I talk with him and he strengthens me and he upholds me. I don't do it myself. I was standing in that door this morning and I could have ran out the door and up the hill. And I was saying, Lord, I can't do it. And that's the truth. I can't do it. I can't, but he can. He can do it. Brother and sister, if you take nothing else from this morning, I want you to take this. You're justified by the justifier. And I want you to remember that. Because God wants you to remember that. You're justified by the justifier. And you let those words ring in your ears. Day and daily. Morning, noon and night. When the enemy comes, ah, but I'm justified. I know I'm justified. And I'm justified by the justifier. I hope you're all encouraged this morning. and God bless you all and keep going.